Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is part two and the final part of this series where I'm creating and customizing a doll to look like a mini me of myself. In part one, I started with a rainbow high Cheryl Meyer doll and dyed, cut, and styled the hair. In the second part, I'm creating and customizing the clothing for the doll. As with part one, I'm going to link everything that I used as a resource or helped me along the way, so you can check them out as well. This video is pretty long, so let's just get started. So I started out by sketching out my design for the doll's clothing and what pieces I wanted to create. So th since this is a mini me of myself, I needed to create an outfit that I would typically wear and also already had pieces of in real life. I generally wear black clothing and like pretty simple clothes. So I decided to go with a black zip up hoodie, a halter tank top with ties in the back and a black mini skirt. And for the shoes, I'm recreating a pair of shoes that I already have. So this is what I'm starting out with at the beginning of this process. I purchased these shoes secondhand and they're from the Harley doll from Shadow High. Yeah, they look just, they look very similar to the Rick Owens Geo Baskets. So I decided to repaint these into the colorway that I have. Got this to kind of match that. This one's for this, this is for the sole. So I'm using acetone nail polish remover to remove the paint from the shoes and repainting them with acrylic paint. After removing the paint with acetone, I made sure to wash every piece with soapy water just so that there's no acetone remaining on the plastic. Since the base plastic of these shoes are black and I'm trying to make them a lighter color, it took many coats to get a solid finish on these. And after painting everything this cream color, I went back and painted the soles a darker yellow color just for some contrast and added detail. All right, now it's time to do the lace. I'm pretty happy with how these came out so far, but if I were to redo it, I would definitely do thinner coats each time so the finish is smoother. I decided to remove her original nail color and paint her nails in a black and white alternating pattern. A lot of people are saying not to use gel polish on dolls or vinyl toys, but a lot of people use UV resin on their vinyl toys, which apparently is the same thing as gel nail polish. If you're worried about the effect of the gel polish on plastic, just don't do this. I also remove the glitter from the eye makeup by just scratching it off with my fingernails. I definitely want to do more complicated face-ups in the future, but 
for now, this is what I did since just to keep it simple and not try too many new things at once. So now I'm going to be creating the patterns for the clothing pieces. I based all of my patterns off of these patterns by Cosmo Moore, and I will put a link in the description below. So I think I'm gonna make it low waisted and maybe a little shorter and have a separate waistband and make the front piece also into two separate pieces. For this process, I basically start with the original pattern, make my adjustments to it for the design that I'm trying to create on paper, then cut out those patterns into my scrap fabric, sew that together and test it on the doll, make some changes depending on how I want it to look or the fit, and then make those changes onto paper, and then create a new mock-up, test that out, and once I'm happy with the mock-up and I've created a paper pattern that I'm happy with, I then use that to cut out my final pattern in my final fabric and then sew that together with all the details needed. It definitely takes more time, but ever since I found out about making mock-ups, which I know is like a basic sewing or design skill, but once I found out about that, I became less frustrated with my with like the sewing process and like creating process anyway i show i go in more detail with the process of making this skirt but i will skip a lot of it for the next couple of pieces because this video is like really really long most a lot of this video is me creating the patterns for the clothes but this is because when i i watch a lot of doll customization videos and i'm always watching these videos being like how did you come up with this shape? Like, where did this come from? I took this and shortened it in the back as well and then from here to here and then added the seam allowance and I also added a section here 
since it's short, I thought this tab is too small to close, so I'm just gonna add another piece of Velcro so the whole back will be Velcro. out the pattern pieces and now I'm gonna cut it. I used some velcro that I had laying around for the closure originally, but I think because of how thick it was, it was creating a lot of extra uh, bunching in the back. And I decided to get rid of the velcro later on and just have it sewn closed in the back. And it worked out fine since the skirt lands at the hip and that is already the widest point on this doll. And I also added an elastic band from the front waistband to the back waistband so that the skirt doesn't ride up and stays at the hip. And also I'm showing here this mistake that I made where I sewed the seam allowance too small on the final skirt so that it is a lot bigger than the mock-up and how the pattern intended. So I ended up taking this out and re-sewing the skirt. So I have this pattern and I also have this dress pattern, but I decided to try to make this jacket more fitted. So I'm just tracing the shape of this sheath dress onto here. And I had some issues with this original pattern where the shoulder seam was longer on the back than the front and I didn't really understand that. So I ended up not using the back piece and just using the front piece but doubled and mirrored for the back. So the front and the back are exactly the same except the front has an opening in the middle and the back is just one piece. And this pattern comes with a hood but it is like a but the hood is the scale of the body and I wanted to create a functional hood that could actually go on top of the head of the doll. Obviously this doll's head is way bigger than its body, so I needed to create my own pattern for the hood that would be big enough for the head, but also attached to the small neck of the rest of the body. So I've cut out all the patterns and let's try sewing it. 
I think I'm gonna go with the long cuff and I pinned it so that I can get an idea of how it would be if I had it closed with the zipper. So here is the new hood pattern that I made and you can see how small it is compared to the original one, the one that I made, which is this. And I just took this same curve here and put it here and then measured the doll's head, like how long should it be and how wide it should be. So I'm gonna test this out and see if this works. So here's the hood, I tried to pin it. And with the seam allowance, I think this length at the front is good, but it is sticking out way too much in the back. So I gotta cut that off and there's supposed to be a hole in the back for her hair to come out. And I think I sewed it way too, a little bit too much. So I need to make the hole bigger. So I will just not sew as much. I'm pretty happy with this. But um, I think I will make the sleeve a little shorter and also thinner. Here's how I made the hood bigger. I just drew a line in the middle and then got another piece of paper, measured out an inch and then spread out the hood to add an inch. And I made sure it was after this curve point. And I think that instead of this, like this is the original diagonal line I made here and here. So I just connected here to here, but I think I will just curve this out so it's not a point. This is my final mock-up and I was pretty happy with everything. I just needed to purchase a zipper. So here I have embroidered these little holes that I cut. So here I've cut holes for the strap and I've kind of like went over the edge with thread to kind of seal the edges. And I've ironed and folded over around like a little bit more than one fourth of an inch. Put the ribbon through and now I'm gonna sew it closed. Well first I hemmed the hood, put this thing in, and then I touched or then I hemmed the, the side of the, the op mid opening of it, center front opening, and then I touched the hood to the rest of the hoodie and then I did a top stitching. I tested it on the doll and it fits pretty well. And here's a zipper I have. So it was originally this long, but I just shortened it by taking off the top tab and then putting it down here and removing some of the teeth. So now it zips close and stops here. So I will be cutting off the extra and then attaching the zipper to here. Keep watching to see how everything turns out. Now I'm creating the halter top and I used the same sheath dress pattern and just shortened it and drew a new neckline for it. I kind of just eyeballed and drew the neckline 
with how I thought it should look and and then created a mock-up, tested it out, made some changes and created another mock-up. The original thing that I used to draft the top, which is this version, and then here is the new version that is a little shorter and the neckline lowered, which led to this mock up. And then after this looked good, I made the same top with a thinner fabric. And finally, I got some Velcro, and I will be using this as the closure for the back of the halter tank top. For this final top, I used a thinner fabric, and I like it because it looks more accurate to doll scale, but since the fabric was so thin and the piece was so small, I couldn't sew it on my sewing machine, and I had to hand sew it. So that's why it looks a bit messier. Now it's time to put everything together and dress the doll. I'm super happy with how the zipper came out. I just hand sewed it in and it's functional and looks pretty good. As you can see, her hair has gotten extremely messy during the process of trying on all these clothes. So I rewashed it and restyled it before taking the final photos. All right, now it's time to see how everything turned out. Alright, I have finished everything. Here she is. So obviously her hair is not the same color, but with a bit of magic. This is so funny. <laughs> I mean, obviously our facial features aren't the same, but it is pretty entertaining to see a doll wearing the same clothes as me. <laughs> Yay, this looks so long. Finally, I'm at this point where I can say I'm done. 
When I get better at making doll clothes, doll hair, and eventually I want to do face-ups, maybe I'll come back and redo the hair, but I think I'm satisfied for now. It's taken me two months to get to this point, so. Sorry, I keep looking at the screen above the camera instead of the lens because I'm just like, my first time seeing myself and the doll side by side. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> I definitely wanna do more customization videos. I love how creepy and insane this is. Maybe narcissistic, anyway. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.